big showdown is over and we know three more uh, qualifiers for the next round but uh, before we go there let's quickly let's do it chronologically and I'll spend the time on especially Liverpool and Napoli. Um, I actually saw a little bit of the early game between Galatasaray and Porto um, which I actually liked um, from the jerseys. Uh, Galatasaray was using the jersey with the Bosporus uh, straight pattern on the front, so the white one, uh, yellow with a little bit of red and zigzag pattern which would be the Bosporus straight. I actually liked, I, I, I actually liked this jersey. Uh, now that I know what it stands for, it's pretty cool, I have to say. And it's pretty cool that they're playing that and Porto was playing in their blue away jersey, which is also quite beautiful. So actually a little bit surprising, but this was a nice matchup. And Porto, I mean, Fenerbahce, uh, Fenerbahce Galatasaray tried to get something going. Uh, I think uh, they are the Ocumis in the early chance and then as soon as Porto hit home a header to 1-0 and then I think they got a penalty, kind of a soft penalty, uh, made it 2-0. I think this was uh, done and dusted at that point. I decided to flip over to Schalke against uh, Lok, which was a dreadful game uh, and I honestly didn't see much of that game. I just let me just my back here. Uh, Hardly any shots, not much going. I mean, Schalke didn't need to, and Lok seemingly couldn't. I mean, a win with the result from Istanbul, a win would have leapfrogged Lok over Galatasaray. Uh, I think a draw might not have been enough, as far as I know. But yeah, nah, would not have been enough. But yeah, uh, absolutely disappointing what they uh, conjured up. Not failed to conjure up, as you might say. Um, nothing coming and Schalke makes in the last minute and that I saw live uh, makes the 1-0 um, and wins the game and at the same time Porto won 3-2 Galatasaray so uh, I think Galatasaray twice cut the lead in half uh, but you know Porto was 3-1 ahead and that, fin that way the group finishes Porto with 16 points um, Schalke has 11, those are the two qualifiers that have a new ahead of uh, this match day already and Galatasaray 4 and Lok 3. So, uh, mind Lok was the number one seed in this group. I think this group is just ridiculous. Um, and given that Inter was in pot 4 and Lok was in pot 1, it's just something not right. There's just something not right with the seeding. I understand what they want, that they want to give the champions a little bit of an advantage. Uh, I'm not just not sure how long this will uh, persist this way. A uh, group where I haven't seen anything with Group A. Uh, I just saw Dortmund winning 2-0 uh, in Monaco. And uh, Club Brugge um, playing a 0-0 draw at home to Atletico. Uh, which has small impact in the sense that Dortmund now is the first placed in the group. Level on points with Atletico, both 13, Brugge had 6 points and Monaco has 1 point. And that takes care of that group. I'm actually happy that, happy that it was Brugge because they actually played well. We could have gotten a little bit more out of uh, it with, with some luck was not beyond them. Okay, the two biggies. Um, I want to first talk about, the, um, I think it was Group B, uh, with Barca Spurs and Inter PSV. Um, I did not see that one live. I saw the results after the Liverpool game and I watched the highlights this morning. Um, and it was quite interesting. Uh, first of all, first blood was drawn by Barca, who really filled the second string squad. I mean, there was Dembele and Coutinho, I think, in the uh, first string lineup, and Coutinho at the moment is not a uh, first team player. Which comes to show that, you know, uh, 
he was great at Liverpool. He actually had an immediate impact for Barca, but seemingly Barca spent oh, oh, overspent on him. Dembele, they probably also uh, overspent on him, and you know he he definitely has character issues. <laughs> but the goal that he scored probably makes it worth it. Um, he is not messy, but he scores regularly now and uh, plays well. And I think that way you basically can forgive him some misgivings, at least momentarily. I honestly think that uh, within two years he is not at Barca anymore. Uh, <laughs> big words. I just uh, don't see Barca keeping up with all the trouble for uh, very long. He has to make a decision whether he wants to be serious about it or if there's something else. And probably the guy needs help. That's first and foremost. Uh, the guy will need some help uh, figuring it out because I think there's some personal issues that come with um, uh, him, you know, missing uh, training and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure if the fine that he had to play the 100,000 euro, euros. Uh, I'm not sure that this is the right way to go. You know, punishment only works that much. But okay, we're going too deep into uh, didact uh, yeah, didactics and so on. Uh, so Barcelona went ahead and Spurs actually for most of the first half didn't have a great showing. Uh, they tried but was kind of uh, fruitless. Uh, and I think it is testament to how deep the Barcelona squad actually is that a top team like Spurs um, has some trouble um, against uh, clearly second string Barcelona squad. Um, and then in the other game, and this is the result that probably caused Tottenham to not get too frantic, um, Lozano scored for PSV after Inter already missed a chance. And I told you, PSV will do their best because they felt cheated against Inter. And I say it myself, PSV was cheated at home against Inter. So I think they wanted to make gold on that. And so Lozano scores the 1-0 uh, PSV in all white with light blue accents. It was a little bit unusual, but uh, I think it made for a clean look uh, against Inter, who of course played it there. Uh, black and blue home strips, and black pants and so on. So yeah, uh, Inter needed time to get going uh, as well. And you know, with Barcelona up, they just needed to get the point. And it became slowly an onslaught from Inter. Inter really throwing everything forward. I think Perisic missed a chance, Politano was working tirelessly. Um, Icardi actually missing chances uh, at many points. In the second half, it was all Inter. It was all Inter to the point where I have to, uh, I have to say, well, uh, they should have, uh, clearly, they would have deserved the win. Uh, in the second half in Barcelona, it was also all Spurs. Uh, Barcelona suddenly held back. I mean, yes, they were the, uh, the angels on the counter, but you could clearly, from what I, heard in the um, in the little highlight video, five minute highlight video, it was clear that Barcelona uh, did not play fully any, any, anymore and it was all Spurs who also missed chance after chance after chance and um, I saw one by Son, I mean it was a, a wide range shot but you know if you hit this one right it gets in. Uh, Inter same thing. Uh, I think Icardi missed one where if he puts it flat, uh, the ball goes in. Um, he it was kind of only uh, you know hip height for the goalkeeper, maybe a little bit, little bit higher, and so the goalkeeper could easily save it. That's uh, how it often goes. But then. Icardi makes his goal. I mean, Icardi always makes his goals. 
and Inter is uh, level 1-1 one, one, and Barcelona leads, so at that point Inter is through. Uh, seemingly the scare is off. However, Tottenham also gets everything going and in the 85th Lucas Moura scores the goal. And now it's everywhere 1-1 one, one, and that means Tottenham is going through because Tottenham uh, is level points with Inter and will make it that way and uh, has the tiebreaker. Um, then I think Tottenham tried to go for it for, for, for the win, but I didn't really see much uh, from the Tottenham side coming. Uh, Inter, on the other hand, had one serious chance in stoppage time to get the winner, which uh, was headed over the bar and thus it ends 1-1. Uh, as a Milan fan, you probably can guess my immediate reaction when I saw the results 1-1, um, Inter out. Um, my first result was chuckling, uh, not yeah, but it, it was a chuckling. My second thought then was, uh, yeah, for Italy this is not good. And my third thought is, yeah, and now, uh, given that Milan gets the result in, uh, at the Olympiacos now, Inter and Milan play both in the Europa League and that probably gives Inter a chance to show off that they are better. So you know, immediately uh, I was kind of a little bit gutted about it uh, as well. So you know, you gotta give and take. Um, if you would ask me beforehand, yes, I would have wanted that Spurs goes on. But yeah, I Yesterday, I think I said that I give Inter uh, the edge. <laughs> was wrong, was wrong. Now, the other game, uh, the game that I watched was, of course, Liverpool Napoli. Uh, I could not always pay full attention, but it was clear that this is the game I said everyone, I need to watch this one. Uh, crazy atmosphere, I mean, they showed uh, the fencing and you'll never walk alone. I think it's, yeah. It's a common occurrence at Anfield, but it always uh, gives chills down your spine because it's such an iconic scene in world soccer. That, yeah. uh, I was happy to see that one once more. Uh, it was also uh, interesting because, as I said yesterday in the video, the PSG uh, result. If PSG just drops a point, then it gets really, really interesting and uh, PSG would be in trouble. Um, the game between Liverpool and Napoli started out quite well um, with Napoli showing some strange inconsistencies in defense. Liverpool looked very threatening from the beginning uh, and actually it was kind of, a, you know, Let's see where, where this, this will go beginning, but very, very, quick, very, very quickly uh, it turned into Liverpool uh, being the dominant team. And Napoli hit hitting uh, the chances on the counter-attack. Um, there was one big chance uh, right, right at the beginning where Salah, clear of goal, gets the ball, but uh, uh, botches the touch and doesn't get any, any anything away. I mean, this should, should have been a clear chance to make it 1 0. Right after, Hamshik has actually quite a, quite a good chance uh, to get the goal. And I think if Napoli would, would have gotten uh, that goal, uh, the game uh, Liverpool would have probably collapsed, uh, collapsed under, uh, under pressure. But the game seemed to go Liverpool's way. There was a very rude tackle by Van Dijk. Uh, I know he tried to play the ball and probably got the ball, but the way he put up his uh, shoe right at Merton's ankle, uh, that was a horrid attack. I mean, this one, if that one goes a little bit worse, then uh, he snaps the ankle of uh, Merton's, which of course I get. He's not uh, wanting to do that, but yeah, it didn't look really did look nice. Well, um, and then there wasn't much from Napoli come, coming in, in, in anymore. It was really mostly Liverpool and Liverpool took the lead through 
helps a lot. I think they could have taken the lead much earlier. I think the uh, offset goal from Mane was uh, rightly called off. Uh, but the goal by Salah was a weird one. I mean, he moves into the box and Koulibaly, who actually I think is a great defender, but yesterday he didn't have his best day, uh, misjudges the move. He thought that um, Salah will cut on the inside. No, he went on the outside towards the touchline. And then also Ospina makes uh, misjudges what Salah wants to do. And Salah shoots it at goal and he, th and he probably thought that he will do the uh, cross in <laughs> didn't look good honestly that goal was very poorly defended yes I know you need to speculate but uh, the shot went through Ospina's legs at a point where Ospina got to make the save sorry to say that and I actually thought that Liverpool could have uh, easily up been 2 nil at halftime Second half, a um, little bit more even, still Liverpool having the more of it. At halftime already, uh, it was known that PSG leads 2 0, so for me, it was all between Liverpool and Napoli. And basically, the weird thing was that even if Liverpool scores the second goal, Napoli just needs a goal. Uh, I think even if Napoli would have they would have conceded a second. It wouldn't have changed much. You didn't have to go frantic or you didn't have gone to, you needed one goal. Uh, Liverpool shouldn't have made a third one, but uh, only if you make Liverpool makes one goal, it doesn't change anything for Napoli. One goal, that's all they needed at that point. It was a very weird situation. And maybe that was why Liverpool got so many chances. I mean, they had got chances for uh, five games. Um, of note, surely was a big chance by um, Salah, where Ospina made good on his miss. Uh, Salah would have been past Ospina, but he just punched it away and then after the cross was nothing happening. Mané had a point-blank chance and another one very late in the game to add a second. I thought Liverpool could have easily made the second goal which would have wrapped up the victory, but not qualification yet. Uh, for that, I think they, uh, they needed three goals. So going forward, Liverpool was better, but Napoli seemingly said, yeah, we don't need to defend any, any, anymore. And I think this is what happened that day. That's why Liverpool got the chances. Uh, and Napoli tried to put numbers forward, but really had trouble. And it was exactly, you know, I think around the 65th or so. I had the feeling, yeah, now Napoli is coming. And then Salah with his, uh, with one big chance that he again he missed. A little bit quieted it also down. It was weird. It, it was weird. There was 10 minutes where I thought Napoli get something going. There was a crossing by Insigne. I think it was in the 79th or something. Where then Kai Hon, the ball goes through the defenders of Liverpool and Kai Kahn suddenly gets to all to the ball but seemingly surprised that he gets this touch. Mishandles the shot and then of course the big one in stoppage time. Uh, Milik, great control on the ball. I mean, this was not an easy uh, ball in. He gets the touch, controls the ball, shoots it, but Allison came out and saves it and I think. And I thought at the point, yeah, these are the types of situations where you pay a goalkeeper uh, millions of uh, pounds because he needed that save. That, if Napoli makes a goal, it's 1-1 one, it's one, one, and Napoli is through. This way, unfortunately, from where I was going, uh, this is nothing against Liverpool. I just, I told you my thinking yesterday. But yeah, Napoli loses the game and I gotta say deserve it. So they were showing too little. Yes, they had the chances, they could have made it. But ov overall, I thought if it's only by that game, Liverpool deserved the win. If I judge by the entire group stage, um, I gotta say that to me, Napoli, of all the four teams in there, was the best team. They just if they don't get the equalizer, in, if they don't concede the equalizer by Di, Di Maria, um, it 
problems. Things would look very, very differently. Uh, PSG runs away 4-1 winners. Um, I think Cavani, Neymar scoring a second goal. That was actually quite well done because he was taking, but he stayed on his feet. Oh, Neymar stayed, staying on his feet and really uh, looked past the goalkeeper to see what. Uh, and slow, slow it in. Cavani made, of course, the first goal. Uh, Juventus West Ham put one back, but as soon as uh, uh, third and Mbappe, I think, made the fourth, uh, were made. Uh, that game was wrapped up and PSG actually wins this group and I gotta say again PSG did not look convincing but uh, and they only lost once and they're the only team to get six points from Chavena's uh, West so it's PSG 11, Liverpool 9 and Napoli 9 and it's because Liverpool has 9-7 and Napoli has 7-5 goals more goals scored is what Liverpool what gets Liverpool through um, a little bit heartbreaking, honestly. Uh, but also, it was a disappointing performance of Napoli overall. Um, I still maintain that Napoli was the best team in this group. Um, and I think of all the other teams, I, d I don't know. I th Liverpool had two no shows. I think Napoli had only if. Judging it from, and this is my personal. Na Napoli had a sort of push wing in the first game against Juventus Vista. I mean, if you get the win there, it also looks different. Um, then you win the group actually. So there are, there are two instances that cost Napoli. But getting the point in Paris, I thought made up for uh, that miss. Um, but Napoli had a very strong showing against Liverpool, where it was actually the other way around. Um, but they didn't make enough goals and Liverpool could, could, have, could have made more. Um, and if you make a second goal against Liverpool or if you take your chances, win 2-0, two, you're through. It's that simple. Uh, so yeah. I think they not, not also had a kind of restraint showing at home to Paris, Paris Saint-Germain. But yeah, I think they really only had one bad show, which was good. Yes, yes, and it was not that horrible. And then uh, Belgrade. Liverpool had two horrible shows. One in uh, Paris and one in Belgrade. Absolute two horror shows. And actually one in uh, Na Na Naples as well. So away from home, Liverpool was horrible. And if I look now at Paris, I had a no-show still made two goals in Liverpool, um, had a no-show at home to Napoli, uh, so that was already not going well, and yeah, I'm arguing myself now that it, that it is um, Liverpool who, 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 who didn't deserve the slot, I don't know. Between Liverpool and PSG is your pick. Uh, I personally think it should have been. Napoli should have come through. But then again, this is how it looks. Well, uh, that's part of the group stage tonight. We have one biggish game between Schachter and Lyon. I'm honestly not sure if I'm gonna watch that one because I had not two nights with little sleep. Uh, so let's see. I would like to, but I'm not sure if I would be able to. And then we're already going into the last uh, stages of the Europa League, which I think there's quite some interesting games there. Um, I'm so sorry that people don't take it seriously in the UEFA seemingly also. Uh, I think there's a lot of great Maybe not great, interesting soccer in the Europa League. Well, that was it for me today. It's really um, English delight and Italian doom and gloom uh, with both going, th uh, both Italians failing to go through. Um, that's how it sometimes goes. And Napoli again is uh, is at the end, is at the wrong end. A very tight group. Um, 
Inter, I think it was that one. Not because I'm a, I'm a Milan fan, but if I look lower, look at how the games progressed, I can live more with Inter uh, not qualifying because they got so they actually got lucky um, at home against Tottenham where they got a win that they had no business and then uh, the game against PSV was the robbery of the year to me again let, let me know your thoughts I'm a little bit doom and gloomy today but you know it is nothing against Liverpool um, I want Liverpool to win the Premier League to be honest so I really hope that that's where they put their focus on uh, and not bother with the Champions League too much I know <laughs> stupid me but uh, that's how I feel um, let me be clear if Milan was in the same situation as Liverpool I would want Milan for once to not go for the Champions League uh, for me a Serie A title at the moment would mean even more than for a Champions League, more than a Champions League. Um, it's not realistic for me. for Milan. It's not realistic any any anyway. But let's say Mil, Mil, Milan will, will have a great squad that is in a similar situation as uh, um, as Liverpool, having not won the title in a long time, even if. It, the last one was 2011. Just to break Juventus' stronghold would mean a lot to me. And I know that, you know, I don't think Liverpool has the squad to win the Champions League at the moment. Uh, there are better squads in there. I mean, the run, they deserve to go to the final last year. Uh, but if I look at the squad that they had, I don't think uh, this would have been one of those lucky years. Again, I know I'm trying to be really reasonable, but I think if you're a Liverpool fan, you probably say, what the ball is he talking about? I got it, and I'll, I'll take that, if that's, if that's what you think. Um, absolutely, cannot argue with you. Just giving you my first I want the Liverpool, it's the Premier League. Okay, well. Let me know your thoughts about all the games yesterday, uh, where you agree and disagree with me, and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Like this video if you enjoyed it. It was a lot of me talking and rambling on, and I will do that again tomorrow.